Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Brother Luke, uh, Sin City Preacher. I think the title of this video will be Universal Reconciliation, Not Universal Salvation. Uh, I want to define those terms, but first let me explain why I decided to even make this video. Um, when we do our show uh, ready with an answer, we have a live portion of the show that is broadcast for the world to see. And after the live portion is closed, we continue talking privately, the, the panelists. And we, we always have some very interesting discussions after the show. Uh, sometimes we talk about the same subject on the show, but more than likely, we, it's just like anything, anything's possible. We could talk about any, any subject that anybody brings up. It's very random. Uh, it's always very interesting. And oftentimes people say, wow, I wish, I wish this was discussion we just had was a video. I wish everybody could have heard that. Well, uh, uh, all those subjects that we, we've discussed, I'm sure that we will eventually get around to making, uh, doing hangouts, doing public discussions on those subjects anyway. But it's really a time for fellowship and just, uh, you know, kind of running different ideas by each other and, and, uh, uh, in, in love, with courtesy, we uh, discuss things that we don't always agree upon, and 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 we try to work it out. And well, the uh, conversation that we had after last Sunday's show uh, was, as usual, very interesting. And Brother Jackson, who is uh, his YouTube channel is uh, Mecca Wing Zero. He has a second channel called uh, uh, Osas Armenian. Uh, well, Jackson is a very smart young man, and he's very, very thoughtful. He really uh, asks a lot of questions, and he's not always persuaded. He's his own man. He, he makes up his own mind. So in some ways, you know, he doesn't always agree with me, but, but then nobody always agrees with me. And I don't know anyone with whom I always agree. But, um, uh, we have these discussions and we still love each other, even though we don't always agree. But in this case, Jackson, uh, brought up a topic that uh, he and I have discussed, uh, you know, uh, numerous times in the past. And we don't agree on this. Um, uh, but, I'm going to uh, present the idea to you now, and I am interested in uh, getting feedback from everybody so we can see how which side of this question that you fall. Uh, and just in this particular case, uh, we participate in the conversation. We had uh, Brother Bill, who's the Panda Man evangelist, and we had Brother Wayne, his YouTube channel is Wayne Crook. Uh, Bill, Wayne, and I all agreed on this topic, and Jackson was uh, the, uh, you know, the the individual. He he wasn't going to conform just because we we saw it one way, and he but he saw it another way. So he he asked questions, and he was defending his side. It was a good conversation, but it uh, just so happens now that uh, Brother Bill. Uh, asked me to watch a video by uh, someone else uh, I just finished watching. And uh, this uh, individual's name is Steve McVeigh. Uh, and coincidentally, or maybe not so coincidentally, <laughs> uh, uh, Steve McVeigh uh, was discussing the same thing. And he went into great detail. The video is about 50 minutes long, I think. He's, he's uh, presenting this. Uh, in a teaching at a, at a church, but he's very thorough. And, uh, I initially thought, well, this will be good. I'll, I'll ask Jackson to watch the video and maybe he'll, maybe he'll be persuaded. Uh, uh, but maybe not. Uh, so 
Now, the, the, the real question is, let me define the, the terms, uh, uh, first of all, in the title. Uh, universal reconciliation, not universal salvation. So how would I define reconciliation? To me, reconciliation uh, in the scriptures just means that uh, God is not angry with man. There is no issue between man and God any longer because the, the sin issue is settled. And Jesus paid for the sins of the whole world. Uh, therefore, there is no longer a sin issue. It's already resolved. Um, as Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. Uh, as it says in the scriptures, the, the curtain in the temple separating the Holy of Holies, the temple was torn open, uh, sy sy symbolizing, signifying that the, uh, uh, the, the barrier between man and God was no longer there. Man now can have access to God. To Man can have an access to a relationship with God because Jesus solved the problem by paying for all of our sins. So that that is reconciliation. That means God's not angry anymore with us anymore. He's made, we have peace with God. Now, uh, salvation. Salvation is, I don't think it's an interchangeable term with reconciliation. Uh, salvation, uh, as I'm going to be using it here, means that um, uh, an individual um, has received the free gift of eternal life by putting their faith in Jesus Christ, uh, and they are promised eternal life in the kingdom of God in heaven. That's salvation. And a part of that is that uh, when they put their faith in Jesus Christ, then uh, they were, uh, the Bible says, quickened. Their spirit was quickened. The dead spirit that we all have uh, was brought to life, and and we are regenerated. That means we are um, brought back, brought to life. Our spirit is brought to life, and we are born spiritually from above. And we're born as a child of God. So these are the things that happen uh, at salvation. When we put our faith in the Savior, we are promised eternal life in the kingdom of God. Uh, and we are born again. Spiritually, we're a child of God. So uh, we have spirit is resurrected, brought to life. So those are the things that uh, encompass salvation. Now, reconciliation just means that, that God's not angry anymore. There's peace, and, and now we have access to God. So now we can receive the gift of salvation if we choose to do that. So uh, that's how um, I see these terms, these words, reconciliation and salvation. So as I see it, uh, there is universal reconciliation in that God is no longer angry at mankind uh, over sin uh, and, and that he is uh, uh, not holding sin against us any longer. And, and so that's universal. That applies to everybody. But salvation is not universal. Salvation uh, is offered to everybody universally, but it's not accepted by everybody. In order to have this salvation, we must accept the free gift from Jesus by putting our faith completely in him in, in the person of Jesus and the fact that he's accomplished this uh, payment for our sins and, and he has the power to give us eternal life. When we believe those things, then uh, we have the salvation. So uh, many of you probably have always thought that reconciliation and salvation were interchangeable, but I, I don't think they are. Uh, now, this question, there is a question of... Um, um, is it is it correct for me to tell an unbeliever that Jesus paid for all their sins? Well, unless you're a Calvinist, uh, you would say yes, yes. We we believe that Jesus paid for the sins of the whole world. He's the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So. Uh, propitiation means satisfactory payment, paid in full. So 
the, uh, the payment for sin was completed by Jesus Christ for every person who's ever lived. It's, it's done. So, uh, if, if the, the, the sins are already paid for, if it's, if it's uh, correct to tell anybody, whether they're an atheist or a Muslim or a, 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 a Buddhist or any, if they're religious or non-religious, if we can tell every single person that 2,000 years ago Jesus paid for your sins, can we take the next step further and say that means that your sins right now are forgiven? Your sins are forgiven already. Now, that's, that's one way of, of uh, seeing this, that, uh, that uh, when Jesus paid for our sins uh, and uh, we have this reconciliation with God, it means that the sins are forgiven. But some people will say, as Brother Jackson and, and many others um, believe, that no, even though Jesus paid for our sins, your sins are not forgiven until you put your faith in the Savior. So somehow, the even though the sins are paid for, it doesn't apply to that person. That that uh, the, the the payment of the sins does not equate or uh, to forgiveness of sins unless a person puts their faith in Jesus. So these are basically two sides uh, and two different positions to the question is. Um, when Jesus died on the cross and paid for the sins of the world, uh, does that mean that everybody's sins are paid for? Whether they believe in Jesus or not, their sins are paid for and they are forgiven. And then the other side is, well, he paid for the sins, but your sins are not forgiven until you put your faith in Jesus. I found it interesting uh, street preaching one day where uh, someone um, a man and his wife came up and talked to me, and they liked what I was doing. And they 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 were they noticed the exact way I was phrasing things. And they said, "It's interesting the the way you say that because we just got back from a convention of uh, I don't know what organization it was. Uh, it was I don't think it was GES, but." If, if it was not GES, it, it was an organization like that. It was a large group of people who hold through this free grace doctrine. And he said, at this particular question, the point of the entire gathering was to debate and decide on this question. And it turns out that uh, uh, there was a great division over that. Uh, does your sins are paid and are paid for mean that your sins are forgiven or does it your sins are paid for mean that no even though they're paid for they're not forgiven until you put your faith in Jesus that was the issue and the convention the entire organization splits over that they ended up dividing and going off their separate ways and I think it's important to say now that I don't believe this is a uh, an issue that uh, anybody should be dividing over. I mean, obviously, Brother Jackson doesn't agree with me or Bill or Wayne, uh, but he didn't say, I want to leave the group. I'm disgusted by the way you see that. And in turn, we, we did not tell him that, uh, hey, you're not welcome here anymore because you disagree with us. No, it's not something that uh, we should divide over, but it, it is important, I think, to, for one reason, just because we want to get it right. It is important to get it right, to understand the scriptures correctly. Uh, now, I know I haven't always gotten it right, and I don't think I have 100% of everything theologically correct right now, because I'm not infallible. But I'm doing the best I can, and with the help of the Holy Spirit and the brethren, as we have these studies together, then hopefully I... I get a lot more right. <laughs> but I want to emphasize that uh, when you make your comments and you kind of choose a side on this, this should not be something for us to call each other names. Uh, it should not be something that we should divide and go off into different factions over this. But 
it is something that I, uh, I'm interested to see how everybody stands on this question. Uh, I, in this video today, I, the purpose is not to prove my side of it. Uh, I've made a lot of videos uh, talking about these kinds of things. I've alluded to it many times in my videos. Uh, I've never really made a video really trying to point by point prove this, prove this because uh, I, on one hand, I don't think that it is uh, that important because uh, both Jackson and I would say that whether a person uh, believed his side or my side of this, that they, they would still be saved. As long as they put their faith in Jesus Christ, they, they're going to have the gift of eternal life. Now, whether their sins were forgiven before they believed or when they believed, uh, uh, it, it's really kind of a moot point in a way because they're going to be saved either way. So some people might say, well, uh, this is a distinction without a difference. But I do think that there are some implications uh, that, uh, that kind of come out of this. Um, I also want to say that uh, 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 one of my favorite uh, pastors, uh, teachers, uh, uh, it, it, I have him rec uh, first on my list of recommended uh, channels. Uh, my favorite channels on YouTube is uh, Aaron Budgen. <clears throat> and if you, if you don't watch his videos, uh, please start watching them. Uh, I think you'll really be blessed. But this is something that he also uh, had, uh, teaches. And, and I think he, it, it's kind of at the heart of his entire uh, message is that our sins are forgiven and now what's left is, uh, it's not the question of receiving forgiveness, it's already done. The question is now, will you receive life? And I, I made this point as, interestingly enough, uh, so probably a couple of years ago, I made a, a video a series called Biblical Christianity. I'm gonna include the link to this uh, in the description on this video. Biblical Christianity, I think it's four parts. Uh, there's about, I think, two hours. The first one, I think, is three hours. Uh, so there's be, there'd be 13, it's a 13 hour series. It's a panel discussion. And um, we discuss what is biblical Christianity, and it's very thorough. But part one, uh, I make the same case, and I I systematically try to, you know, kind of prove this point that, look, there's two problems that, that need to be resolved. One was the problem of sin, and Jesus solved that problem when he died on the cross and paid for our sins. So now our sins are forgiven, so that's no longer a problem. The, the other problem is life. Uh, every man is mortal. Where we, uh, the Bible says that man has a mortal soul, not an immortal soul, so as many people think. But so we need to be, as when we put our faith in Jesus, the Apostle Paul says it makes the, the immortal, uh, the mortal immortal, we put on immortality when we put our faith in Jesus. So what needs to be done, and once our sins are forgiven, and we understand that, what needs to be done next is, uh, do you want eternal life? Do you want immortality? Or do you want don't want it. And if you, if you don't want it or don't ever get it, that means that you're immortal and you will die. And in, and if worse than that, uh, you will also die the second death. Uh, scripture says that, uh, uh, those who have not put their faith in Jesus at the great white throne judgment, uh, they, um, they end up, um, going into the lake of fire, which is the second death. So uh, the question is twofold. Uh, how, how are the sins forgiven? Well, Jesus took care of that. He paid for our sins. We're all forgiven. Now the question remains, do, will you have life or will you not have life? Uh, I made a video called uh, It's a Matter of Life and Death that kind of makes this point too. Uh, so if you want to watch the video I have on called Biblical Christianity Part 1, you'll understand more uh, thoroughly uh, what I'm saying here. Um, so the um, the video that I watched today that Brother Bill sent to me and asked me to watch by Steve McVeigh was really, really excellent. And for Brother Jackson and for anybody else who... Um, 
uh, if you're either uh, um, not familiar with this question or you ha and you have or you haven't thought it through and tried to figure it out and and uh, uh, or if you're on the other side of it if you're if you're on brother Jackson's side of this then watch this video by Steve McVeigh I'll put the link on the description as well and I think that Steve McVeigh does an excellent job of I think proving the case that uh, we are already reconciled well, that means that sins are forgiven, even for those people who don't believe in Jesus. But that doesn't mean that they have eternal life and are going to go to heaven. That's contingent upon us putting our faith in the Savior. So uh, Stephen Gray does a very good, thorough job on that. I, I was concerned near the end of his video, he made this, a statement that I, 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 I'm not sure if I understood it correctly, but if I did, then I, I would have to disagree with him, and which he's, he's stating that um, everybody is not only forgiven, but everybody is already in Christ. Uh, now, I believe that uh, when we put our faith in Jesus, we are in Christ, and Christ is in us. It's reciprocal, you know, and, and uh, uh, but that's that doesn't happen universally. Uh, uh, only those people who put their faith in Jesus are in Christ, and also uh, Christ and the Holy Spirit is in us. So if you watch the video and you you notice that, I want you to understand that uh, I don't agree with that statement. So uh, I, I may have misunderstood him though. Okay, so uh, let me let me make one final point here. Uh, on one hand, I'm saying that this is a distinction without a difference because uh, whichever side you're on, uh, a person has eternal life and they go to heaven uh, regardless uh, of which way you see this as long as they put their faith in Jesus um, so is it is it important at all really uh, I would say for this reason okay uh, this we right now I can safely say that uh, you know this cross the significance of the cross, I've explained. It's, it's, it's finished. We're reconciled. We're forgiven. Okay. That happened about 2000 years ago when Jesus paid for our sins. Uh, but what I'm seeing today is there's a kind of an argument and disagreement going on about, okay, now that we're saved, um, what about sin? What about works? What about sanctification? Uh, what about growing and maturing in Christ? Uh, uh, if a person thinks that their sins are not forgiven, uh, even though Jesus paid for their sins, but their sins are not forgiven, then then they may have some doubts about, uh, uh, you know, even though they put their faith in Jesus, there's still this question that sin is still an, an issue somehow. And, and uh, you know, you've heard the saying that it's not a sin issue, it's a son issue. Well, I, I believe that that's true based upon the way I see this forgiveness. It's not a sin issue. Sins are paid for, we're forgiven. Uh, but uh, if you don't believe that we already have forgiveness, then you could get hung up uh, dwelling too much on your on sin and trying to overcome sin through your own effort. But... Uh, if a person will understand that um, Scripture says that um, there's no greater love than being willing to give your life for a friend. And that's what Jesus did for us. He gave his life for us, demonstrating the greatest love. He was willing to die for us. And the, and the, the Scripture says that, that we love him because he first loved us. I know that's what happened to me when I got saved as I was reading the scriptures and I understood what Jesus did for me and how much he loved me. I, I couldn't help but love him in return. So I believe that uh, once we're saved, rather than being sin conscious and trying to make an effort to overcome our sin and do good works and all that, being hung up on you know, kind, of, kind of either legalistic or borderline legalistic, I think the answer is this, and that is, Remember, think about how much Jesus loves you, how much you love him. Stay focused on Jesus 
If I'm continually focused on Jesus Christ every day, I'm not going to be focused on sin. Sin, sin doesn't even enter my mind because Jesus is on my mind. I, I'm, I'm always thinking about the love relationship between Jesus and myself. And I'm not thinking about, you know, my relationship to sin. It's just not even an issue. I'm not saying that I don't sin, but I don't spend my time thinking about whether I am sinning or whether I'm not sinning. Uh, if, uh, when I do sin, no, I, you know, I, the Holy Spirit that lives in me, that's sealed into me, is, you know, uh, if I grieve the Spirit, you know, I, I, I feel it. And the Spirit's telling me, hey, you got off track. I know I'm forgiven, but I still want to live a life that uh, so that I'm not grieving the Holy Spirit. So that to me, that is the uh, maybe the one of the reasons uh, that it's important to get this right. Um, even though uh, whichever side you're on here, uh, it, it's not going to affect whether someone's saved or not. The only thing that determines if someone's saved or not is uh, have they put their faith in the Savior. That brings us to a, another point here that I kind of related. Uh, the hangout we did last Sunday, the f part one of the uh, discussion on Roman Catholicism, we had a, a young lady uh, make a comment, several comments, and she says she is a Roman Catholic. And I, you know, we went back and forth with uh, comments and answers, uh, and and she said she really preferred Brother Jackson out of the group because she liked his attitude. Uh, and I said, yeah, I'm, I can understand that. Uh, and, and that, uh, um, then the, the, the most important thing to me was not, you know, having a conversation with her about all the things that are, may not be that important. What's really important to ask a Roman Catholic is, I said, I'd like to ask you the one question I ask every Roman Catholic. And that is, do you think you're going to go to heaven? And if so, why? Well, um, in my whole life, I've been asking Roman Catholics. I ask everybody that, especially Roman Catholics, though, because every Roman Catholic I've ever asked, their answer is, well, I hope I'm going to heaven. I think I might be going to heaven. I'm not sure, or, you know, I'm probably going to go to heaven. And, and, and why? Well, the reason is because, you know, I was baptized. I did go to uh, confession and communion. I'm, 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 I'm trying to do the best I can. And I got my fingers crossed hoping it's good enough. And see, all Roman Catholics are putting their faith, putting their confidence in their own performance. I have yet to find any Roman Catholic that says, yes, I, I'm, I'm going to heaven. And the reason is because of Jesus. Not because of anything I do, not because of religious things I do, only because of Jesus. He died for my sins. He promised me eternal life. He proved he has that the power to give me life because he raised himself from the dead. Uh, so only because of Jesus. Uh, so uh, I'm happy to tell you that the young lady, though, was the first Roman Catholic in all the years I've been asking that question, the first one that gave me a satisfactory answer. So I, I, I can actually call her sister, even though she's a Roman Catholic, uh, even though, it's, and uh, I'm going to discuss that more that, you know, are, are, are some Roman Catholics saved? Uh, we'll discuss that uh, in the next Sunday show. Okay, so I'm going to be also, I'm going to also put up a link to a third uh, video because I want to make sure everybody is understanding that uh, I'm not talking about universal salvation. Uh, I made a video uh, called Why Not Universal Salvation? And I proved that universal salvation is not biblical. And I certainly don't hold that doctrine. I hold the doctrine of the universal reconciliation. Everybody's sins are forgiven. But, but universal salvation, no. Uh, salvation is not universal. It's only for those who put their faith in the Savior Jesus. Okay, so I, I hope this was uh, helpful and enlightening to you. And I'm also um, very interested in your comments. Uh, so please participate and please rest uh, in the love and grace of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.